Hello, my name is Neil Ide from Skyway Software, and in this screencast, we're going to take a deeper look at the uh, scaffolding wizard in My Eclipse for Spring. In a lot of our screencasts, we use the scaffolding wizard to demonstrate, you know, one particular type of uh, code generation or one particular use case, and we end up going through that wizard very quickly because we want to leave some time to be able to actually show you what gets generated or the generated, you know, the the, the output of the scaffolding wizard. But we really don't spend a lot of time uh, uh, going through the scaffolding wizard in detail so I figured this screencast really would be about focusing just on the scaffolding wizard we're not really focusing on any particular use case um, even though my eclipse for spring has a lot of different code generation options uh, and you'll see those as part of the wizard and the wizard is what you use to actually select those and and, and use those and, and generate for these different you know technologies um, we're really going to focus on how you use the wizard uh, so you can see exactly how easy it is and what all your configuration options are um, so that you can get the most out of my eclipse for spring when you're generating software components for your projects. So one of the things to know is that the scaffolding wizard has a lot of different panels and you will be presented with those panels based on the selections that you make on you know the earlier panels. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go through in order to cover the vast majority of the panels in the wizard we're going to need to go through two scenarios. And so the first scenario is actually using code generation from a database schema and then the second scenario uh, we will see the code generation from Java Beans or JPA entities. The first scenario is code generation from a database schema or an existing set of database tables. So I already have a project created. In order to access the scaffolding wizard, I need to right click on the project, select the My Eclipse menu, and select the Scaffold Spring CRUD application menu item. And this brings up a wizard, and in this wizard is where I will specify what I want to use as an input into scaffolding. Do I want to scaffold from database tables? Do I want to scaffold from JPA entities? Or do I want to scaffold from Java Beans? The next panel is for actually selecting the database connection that should be used for accessing the database tables that you want to use as an input for scaffolding. My Eclipse for Spring comes with My Eclipse Derby as a sandbox database that can be used and it also has a database connection already created for you. So that's why we see that item here in this list. In the next panel is where you actually pick the schema, the dialect, and the tables that should be used for scaffolding. So the schema drop down will show you a list of all of the database tables that are included in the database connection that we selected in the previous panel. I can also override the dialect that's automatically selected for me based on the database connection. And then what I do is I actually select from the left column the tables that I actually want to use for scaffolding. So I might have more tables than I really want to scaffold from. So I go ahead and select those tables and click the next button. In this panel is where you actually select which entities you want to be top level entities in your user interface. And you'll check off the ones that you want to be the top level. Any of the ones that you don't check off will be automatically treated as children entities. Um, and they will be reflected as such in the user interface. Um, the other thing about this particular panel is that you'll notice that the Java object name was automatically derived from the table name. In most cases that might be appropriate, but in some cases you might actually want to override the uh, Java object name to be something more meaningful to your application. You, um, you may not necessarily want to have your Java objects tied directly to the original names of the tables that they were that you used for scaffolding. So this panel gives you an opportunity to override that with whatever uh, whatever name um, you would like to use, as long as it's a valid Java name, you can use whatever you like in there. In this panel is where you start to specify exactly what it is that you want to have generated. So the first thing that you'll typically do is you'll specify a base package. And the base package is used to automatically derive the package names for all of the other layers. Now if you prefer to specify your own package names by hand, you're more than welcome to type them into those text boxes or also to use the select button beside the text boxes to select from pre-existing packages that you already have within your project. The next thing that you do from this panel is you actually specify which layers of the application you want generated. So this is kind of, you know, there's a very broad set of capabilities for code generation and here is where you can actually specify 
what layers of the application you're interested in generating from the inputs that you selected on the previous panel. So if you're interested in generating a full ready to run application that can be immediately deployed and, and you can immediately start running, then you're likely going to want to pick all the layers. However, if you're only interested in maybe generating a flex front end based off of one of your database tables or a DAO layer from a set of your database tables, um, you can select the specific layers that you want here and uh, only those layers will be generated for you. Now in the last panel I specified that I wanted to generate a web layer and in this panel is where I actually specify which type of web layer I would like to generate and you can actually pick from multiple different options um, and uh, as you can see you have a variety of options a Spring MVC, Spring Webflow, Adobe Flex, Google Web Toolkit, iPhone, and Java server faces. And you'll also see that we provide a brief description of actually what gets generated for each of those different choices. Um, if you want more details, you can check out the blueprints and you'll notice that we have a shortcut for you on the right hand panel there for, uh, you know, to give you quick access to the different blueprints. But this is where you really pick, you know, what type of web layer you want to generate. And in most cases, you'll only pick one. Um, but if you're in a situation where you are evaluating different, uh, you know, UI technologies and you want to see, you know, the given application in a whole variety of different front ends, then you can go ahead and select all of them from here. In this panel is where you will specify which specific version of GWT you want to generate for. The two different versions are GWT 2.0 or GWT 2.1 or greater. Uh, the differences between these two are that there were some different best practices and some different styles to development and so if you're developing a new GWT application then you probably want to use the newer version however if you're supporting and you want to generate code for an older GWT application then you probably want to use the GWT 2.0 setting. This panel is dedicated to the flex scaffolding or this flex code generation and you can pick the home directory of your Flex SDK and you can specify for which version of Flex you want to generate for. The next panel is used for specifying whether you would like to generate a REST front end or REST web services for your web application and whether or not you'd like to enable JSON support for those RESTful services. The next panel is where you can actually start to customize the user interface. So, uh, this, yeah, when you when you scaffold from database tables, you know the field names and the entity names are automatically derived from the database tables and the database columns which may or may not be what you want in your user interface. So rather than actually having to go through and modify your user interface after the code generation is completed, this particular panel gives you an easy way of actually customizing the uh, field names that are used and the entity names as well as specifying which fields will show up on your list pages and um, and you can actually customize that on a uh, front end by front end basis so you, if you want to have certain fields shown in a certain way for Spring MVC but you want to have it a different settings for your Adobe Flex application this panel gives you one place to be able to make those changes and uh, you can choose whether or not you want to have those propagated to all of the other web client types or if you uncheck that then each one can have its own custom settings So this particular panel gives you a lot of options. Uh, first and foremost, uh, it allows you to specify where you would like to have your source code generated to, where you would like to have your resources generated to, and what your web content folder is. And typically, these folders will be automatically determined by the wizard by you know introspecting your project, and uh, and then you know these will be preset for you. And of course, you'll have the option of overriding them. Um, this will also support Maven and standard Eclipse projects. So if you're using a Maven project, um, it will automatically show you the appropriate Maven folders here. The other thing about this is that it also gives you the op this panel gives you the option of adding the Spring Nature, uh, which is some additional tooling that's available uh, in My Eclipse for Spring. Um, and you can also specify whether or not you would like to enable transaction support in the um, in the data access layer of your application. Um, 
and furthermore you can even customize you know what you would like to use as your persistence provider would you like to use um, hibernate or would you like to use data nucleus as your persistence provider and those are the two that we support at this time from a code generation standpoint but of course you can go in there and configure whatever you want This panel allows you to select which libraries you would like to have added to your project and um, there is a whole wide set of libraries and the ones that are automatically checked by default uh, are determined by the code generation options that you selected in the previous panels but you can completely customize that any way that you would like and omit or add the groups that you may or may not be interested in. Um, this uh, supports both Spring 2.5 and Spring 3.0 so you'll notice that there's a slightly different set of libraries based off, with, based off of which version of Spring you're using and as far as how these libraries are added to your project if it's an Eclipse project you have the option of having the libraries copied into your project or you can have them added as class path containers to your project and if it's a Maven project these libraries will be added as dependencies into your Maven POM file and will also add the appropriate repositories if uh, they aren't if they don't currently exist within the, the POM file and the final panel is a summary panel where you can see a summary of what you selected in the earlier panels and if you click the finish button that will trigger the code generation process and within a few minutes you will have um, everything that you asked to be generated for you next let's cover the scenario where you're actually generating from java beans or jpa entities so what we're going to use for this example is a simple bean that's been created in the current project in a new package and what we're going to do is we're going to use a standard Eclipse functionality for generating the getters and setters for this particular bean um, and then from there uh, we will actually uh, invoke uh, well first we'll save the entity and then we can just right click on the project and once again invoke the scaffold spring crud application wizard and the first panel is a panel that we've already seen before except this time rather than selecting database schema we're going to select java beans what this next panel will do is it will it'll show us a list of all of the java beans that are in our current project and from here we can actually see by package which java beans are available on the left hand side and we can select which ones we actually want to use to scaffold and add those to the right column this panel is also a new panel or it's a panel that we haven't seen before and this panel is used for specifying which attributes or which fields in the java bean should be used to uniquely identify the object or should be treated as the primary keys um, to this particular object and this last panel is used for specifying what database connection should be used as the data source for the generated application Anyhow, that concludes the Springcast, and hopefully that gave you some, you know, a, a better understanding for how you can use the scaffolding wizard in My Clips for Spring. Um, there's a lot of different use cases in there, and most of our other Springcasts on uh, our YouTube channel um, will use the scaffolding wizard in some form or fashion in order to accomplish some sort of, of output or generation and uh, this one hopefully gives you a little bit more details as we're skimming through those uh, wizards very quickly in those other screencasts um, hopefully this screencast can serve as a reference for some of the more details or some of the more some of the, some of the subtleties of the scaffolding wizard um, if you'd like to learn more about my eclipse for spring uh, please check out the following url and uh, you can also follow us at, at genuatech or at skyway software and you can also find this screencast as well as all of our other screencasts on our YouTube channel called My Eclipse for Spring. Thank you very much, very much for your time, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave us a comment on uh, this uh, screencast or leave us a question on the My Eclipse for Spring forums. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.